Hi there boys and girls, welcome to ITTV and you're with me, Mr. Joe, your tutor for this lesson. So today we're going to look at a whole new chapter and it's called chapter 6 of your maths form 4 syllabus and the title of this chapter is called statistics or right, I'm sure you're very familiar right you have learned basic statistics before before we go in deeper about statistics let us take a look at what is it used for that brings us to our segment of mathematics in life <music> All right, let's say I'm going to make a survey or a study for 40 pupils, all right, in a random class. And I'm going to survey about the kinds of transport that these kids use to go to school. So take a look at this picture. All right, let's say you are involved in my survey. How many of you go to school by the LRT? Or you walk to school because the distance is very near. Or you take a bike to school or you take a Ferrari to school or you take a bus to school or any other mode of transport so now out of 40 people will everybody come to school by bus most likely not right there will be a mixture because these are different kinds of transport some are going to take the bike some are going to take the car so remember statistics is used a lot in surveys what about our next field of survey? Let's say now the same 40 people are used in that particular class and I'm interested to know the type of food that they like to eat most. So take a look at this picture here. You have a few kinds of food. You have a nasi lemak, pizza, western food and looks like uh, some me. So what kind of food do you like? All right, is it one of these or some any other type? So remember, we can actually classify the people who like to eat nasi lemak into one group, right? Those who like to eat Western food in another. So it needs to be done. Somebody needs to take down the numbers. Or finally, which is your favorite actor? So take a look at this picture here. Do you like Brad Pitt? Or Kate Winslet? Or Iron Man? or the Rambo Man or Sylvester Stallone, okay? Which guys do you like? So remember here, not all will like the same kind of actor, right? So statistics actually is used in every day. These are just simple illustrations about statistics. Do you know that it is used deeply in other matters? All right, so with just a simple illustration to you about the use of statistics, let us begin with this lesson. Statistics. We're going to look at a few important basic properties about statistics. So please follow me carefully. Is a singular, is a scientific discipline dealing with the collection, organization, interpretation of data. All right, what does it mean by statistics is a singular? Mostly in words, right? When you add an S behind a word, it means plural, right? But statistics is considered a singular term because it is a field of study, all right? Like mathematics, one, it covers one item. Statistics is considered a single field of study. So what is it used? Collecting, organizing, interpreting data. No matter what data is used, whether it is favorite actor, favorite food, and all those stuff. Next, very useful in the planning of data collection in terms of surveys and experiments. All right, with the knowledge of statistics, it will help you, all right, to plan your data carefully so your data won't be in a mess, all right? Early on, we discussed about a survey of 40 people. What about a survey of 4,000 students, all right, about their favorite actor? Or 40,000 students, right? The more data you use, it is going to be messier if you do not plan them carefully. All right, now let's look at the first important property, class interval. Used when organizing a large amount of raw data into grouped data. Convenient classes of range in each class is used. 
The range of values of each class is known as the class interval. So alright, before we get things started, remember, the most important thing is to organize your data into class intervals, alright? And what is it used for? Remember, raw data. This means data that hasn't been organized or arranged yet. It is the first important basic step before you do other interpretation, which is to put them in respective class intervals. For example, 12 to 15, 16 to 19, 20 to 23, and so on. So these are just a few class intervals. Remember, class intervals simply mean numbers in a class, 12 to 15. Any data that lies between 12 and 15 will be put inside that class. Any data that lies between 16 and 19, or from 16 to 19, you're gonna put that in the class and this goes on. So remember, first step is always organize it in class intervals. Uniform class intervals means all the class intervals have the same range. For example, 12 to 15, 16 to 19, and 20 to 23. So these here are three class intervals which are same in size. And we call them uniform class intervals because they have the same class size. Non-uniform class intervals are otherwise. For example, 12 to 15, 16 to 20, and 21 to 30. So now look carefully here. Not all the classes are of the same size because 21 to 30 is a much larger class compared to 12 to 15 and 16 to 20. So remember, two types of class intervals, whether they are uniform, where all of them are the same, or non-uniform, where some class intervals are not the same as the most of them. The classes must be mutually exclusive and are usually uniform to enable histograms to be drawn more conveniently. So remember, because we have two types of class intervals, we are going to use more of the first type, which is uniform class intervals. Why? Because this allows more systematic planning when you organize, collect, and interpret your data. So we're going to just stick to uniform class intervals in this chapter. Discrete data. For example, 0 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 14, and so on. Continuous data. For example, x is larger or equal to 10, less than 20. x larger or equal 20 less than 30, and so on. So your class interval can be used to put in either discrete data or continuous data. All right, big words, what is the difference? Discrete data simply means the data is in integers. All right, like one, two, three, there's no decimal or fractions. Unlike continuous data, continuous data, the data can be in the form of fractions or decimals and not necessarily integers. So remember, early on we also mentioned histogram, all right? And what is a histogram? A histogram is basically a statistical graph that you will see later on in this chapter where it is used to identify graphically a set of data. All right, now let's look at the next part of this lesson. Completing the class intervals for specific set of data. Example, complete the following tables using uniform class intervals. A, class interval, given ones are 0 to 9, 10 to 19. B, given class intervals are 1.0 to 1.4, 1.5 to 1.9. So look carefully. In the first one, A, the data is discrete. It means it is in the form of integer. Second one, you have 1.2, 1.3 and all this, right? It is called continuous data. So how do we complete the table here? Step one, determine the range of each class interval. So now looking back at the first table, class interval 0 to 9, range 9 minus 0 
equals 9. For the class interval 10 to 19, range 19 minus 10 equals 9. So 0 to 9 is plus 9 units, 10 to 19 also plus 9 units. So remember the range is simply subtracting, alright? 0 and 9, the ages of the first and the second class. Step 2, ensure that the range is uniform. The class intervals have the equal range. Range equals to 9. Step 3, complete the table. A, 0 to 9, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, 30 to 39. So remember, completing the table is very much an easy task. Okay, All you have to do is check the given one. They will always give you two or three class intervals. So you check and analyze them. Check the range. How large are they, all right? Take the lower and the upper part, minus it. And then make sure that every part is equal. Based on that, identify a pattern. You know what's a pattern? A pattern is a general sequence that needs to be followed. So if the first is 0 to 9, 10 to 19, the next should be 20 to 29, 30 to 39. If it goes on, 40 to 49, 50 to 59. All these are uniform class intervals. B, 1.0 to 1.4, 1.5 1 to 1.9. Next one, 2.0 to 2.4, 2.5 to 2.9. So remember now, all these class intervals are non-overlapping. This means that they are mutually exclusive. 1.5 to 1.9, Next must be 2.0 because they cannot overlap. Complete the following tables based on the given information. Let's look at the tables A and B. Okay, For A, class interval, the given classes are 0 to 7, 8 to 15. And can you see there are another four more class intervals that you must insert? B. The given class intervals are 0 0.1 to 1.0, 1.1 to 2.0, and same, there are another four more class intervals to complete. So, this just takes a second, guys. Alright, can you try it yourself now? We'll be back a while to discuss the remaining class intervals. Alright guys, have you got your class intervals with you? Alright, I want you to check them alright because I'm going to do it on the board for you to have a look. So remember, what is our task now? To complete the table using class intervals that are uniform. What does it mean by uniform? Same size, alright? So remember the steps. All you have to do is to identify a pattern. So if 0 to 7, 8 to 15, right? What is the range? 0 to 7, the range is 7 minus 0, 7. 15 minus 8, also 7. So this means that 7 will be the pattern. So the next four class intervals should also be 7 in their ranges. So what do you think? Since they are overlapping, which means that 0 to 7, the next must be 8 eh? because they are exclusive to 15, the next must be 16. And then when it is added with 7, it gives you 23. So the next one will be 24. Add with another 7, it gives you 31. So remember, all of them are uniform. So make sure now you can identify a pattern. The next, 32, add it with 7, 39. And the last class, 40, add it with 7, 47. So if you look carefully, all of them have a class interval that are of the same size. Alright, let us look at B. 
the given class intervals are 0 0.1 to 1.0, 1.1 to 2.0. All right, now look at the numbers here. They are decibels. This means that continuous data is being put in this table, but never mind. Let us just complete this table. So another four, check carefully 0 0.1 to 1.0, 1.1 to 2.0. Remember guys, mathematics is all about patterns, sequences. Can you identify them? I know that since 2.0 is the last one here, the next one will be 2.1 and follow the pattern to 3.0. 3.1 to 4.0, 4.1 to 5.0, 5.1 to 6.0. So remember, the first part of statistics is always to determine the class intervals. Alright, so once we have here very neat six class intervals which are of the same size, determining the upper limit, lower limit, upper boundary lower boundary and size of a class interval. All right, there are many things happening here. We will go through them slowly, one by one. Class limits, what are they? The ends of a class interval are called class limits. For example, zero to seven. So look at this number line. Zero is the end. And on the extreme end, it is also Seven. So what have these numbers got to be significant about? The values required can be written in the form of a class interval, 0 to 7. The limits of this class are 0 and 7. The first or smallest value of the class interval is known as the lower limit. In this case, 0 is the lower limit. The last or largest value of the class interval is known as the upper limit. In this case, 7 is the upper limit. Alright guys, let's go back to the board. I want to demonstrate to you what are the limits again, okay? Limits are simple. We have done both of these questions early on, okay? Just look at this first table. 0 to 7, 8 to 15, 16, 23, 24, 31, 32, 39, 40 to 47. Now. These are just class intervals. But remember, now in the class interval, there are important properties as well. The first is the upper and lower limit. So take this class, for example, 8 to 15. The extreme left, 8 is called the lower limit. 15 is called the upper limit. 16 is the lower limit of this class. And 23 is the upper limit. So when you have a class interval, the left hand side is called the lower limit. The right hand side is called the upper limit of that class. Class boundaries. Due to rounding, the stated class limits do not correspond to the actual range of data falling in them. For example, if the class interval is 1.0 to 1.4, then all values between 0.95 and 1.45 would actually fall in the given class. The boundaries of the class 1.0 to 1.4 are 0 0.95 and 1.45. So remember that class boundaries are actually different from class limits. Why? Because you have to take into consideration the rounding aspect in maths. Most times, data and figures, right, will come with some rounding, right? So you have to take into consideration a bit and to give some allowance at the front and at the back of the class interval. Class boundary can be determined by finding the average of the highest value or upper limit of one class and the lowest value, lower limit of the next or succeeding class. The lower boundary of a class is the average, okay, listen carefully, of the lower limit of the class and the upper limit of the preceding class, the class before it. So lower boundary, how do you find it? It's actually an average between the lower limit of this class and the upper limit of the previous class. Take it, average, divide by two. 
the upper boundary of a class is the average of the upper limit of the class and the lower limit of the succeeding class, the class after it. For example, take class 1.0 to 1.4. So guys, I want you to take a look at this carefully. So now, for example, I'm going to use 1.0 to 1.4. So now, we know that the lower limit is 1.0 and the upper limit is 1.4. What is the upper class boundary? So now, if 1.0 to 1.4 is my class, the next class, although it is not here, will logically be 1.5 to 1.9, right? Since all of them are uniform classes. So now, look back. If 1.5 to 1.9 is inserted, there will be a space between 1.4 and 1.5, right? So that space there is called the upper class boundary. To get it, you must take the upper limit of the class, 1.4, add it with the lower limit of the next class, which is 1.5, and divide it by 2. It will give you 1.45. Alright, take a look closer to the left and you will see the lower class boundary. So lower class boundary is also an average. So remember, if 1.0 to 1.4 is my example class here, what will be my previous class? Logically, 0.5 to 0.9. And remember the definition, lower boundary is actually taking the lower limit of this class plus the upper limit of the previous class divided by two. So now 1.0 is the lower limit, 0.9 is the upper limit of the previous class. Add it up, divide by 2, gives you 0.95. Hence, for the class 1.0 to 1.4, the lower boundary equals 0.95. The upper boundary equals 1.45. Alright guys, take a look at this quick test. Determine the lower and upper boundaries of each of the following class intervals. A, 0 to 9. B, 0 0.01 to 0 0.05. So remember, lower and upper boundaries, okay? So taking a look back at A, 0, 9. Let's do this together. Step 1, determine the upper limit of the preceding class of 0 to 9 minus 1. Preceding means before. Okay, so 0 to 9, since it is the class that we want, the upper limit of the previous class or the preceding class will be 1 before. So it will be negative 1. Step 2, find the lower boundary of 0 to 9. So lower boundary equals negative 1 plus 0 divided by 2 equals negative 0 0.5. Step 3. Determine the lower limit of the succeeding class of 0 to 9. 10, right? Because this would be the lower limit of the next class. What are you trying to find now? The upper boundary of the class 0 to 9. Step 4. Find the upper boundary of 0 to 9. Upper boundary equals 9 plus 10 divided by 2 equals 9.5. For B, lower boundary equals 0 0.00 plus 0 0.01 divided by 2 equals 0 0.005. Upper boundary equals 0 0.05 plus 0 0.06 divided by 2 equals 0 0.055. So guys, do not be confused between the class limits and the class boundaries, all right? Class limits are as it is. When you see any class interval, for example, 11 to 15, 11 will be the lower limit, 15 will be the upper limit. But when it comes to class boundaries, what are you actually doing? You're actually taking into consideration the new range of data when you consider the aspect of rounding of figures. 
the lower and the upper boundary needs to be calculated because they are actually an average value. For lower boundary of that particular class, take the lower limit, add it with the upper limit of the previous class divided by 2. For the upper boundary, take the upper limit of that class, add it with the lower limit of the next class and divide it by 2. Alright guys, exercise. Complete the following tables. Alright, A. Class interval, 1 to 9, 10 to 19. Alright, take a look at the first class. I've already put them down for you. Lower limit is 1. Upper limit, 9. Lower boundary, 0 0.5. Upper boundary, 9.5. All right, the second class, 10 to 19. Can you do the rest? Remember, fill them down step by step, column by column. So you know that for 10 to 19, the lower limit will be 10, upper limit will be 19, right? But how do you get the lower boundary? All right, for 10 to 19, the lower boundary is the lower limit of that class, which is 10 added with the upper limit of the previous class, which is 9, divided by 2, 9.5. Do the same with the upper boundary and repeat the whole process. Your table should look like this, okay? So the remaining class intervals, 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59. Lower limit, the remaining ones, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Upper limit, the remaining ones, 19, 29, 39, 49, 59. Okay, these are the easier ones. All right, lower boundary, upper boundary. The remaining ones, 9.5, 19.5, 29.5, 39.5, 49.5. Upper boundary, the remaining ones, 19.5, 29.5, 39.5, 49.5, 59.5. So guys, take a look carefully again at this table here. If you notice carefully, you would not need to calculate the lower and the upper boundary for every class because that would be too taxing. Remember, pattern is the word. Once you see that the lower and the upper boundary is just subtracting 0.5 from the limit and adding 0.5 from the upper limit, you just repeat the process. All right, B, class interval given ones, 0 0.1 to 0 0.4, 0 0.5 to 0 0.8. Another two more class intervals. Can you fill them together with their class limits and class boundaries? All right, guys, it will look something like this. The remaining class intervals, 0 0.9 to 1.2, 1.3 to 1.6. All these are uniform class intervals. You have to always make sure that they are of the same size. All right, limits. Lower limit, all the left edges all right, of the class interval. 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.9, 1.3. Upper limit, all the right edges. 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 1.2. 1.6. Alright, now it comes to the boundary. Lower and upper boundary. This needs to be calculated. So let's take a look at the first class interval. 0 0.1 to 0 0.4. How are you going to get the lower boundary? Remember, lower boundary formula, lower limit of the class plus upper limit of previous class divided by 2. So what is the lower limit of this class? 0 0.1. Upper limit of previous class, although it's not there, you know it's actually 0, 0.0. So do some calculation mentally. 0, 0.0 plus 0, 0.1 divided by 2 gives you 0, 0.05. Same with the upper boundary. Remember the formula? Upper boundary of a certain class is the upper limit of that class added with the lower limit of the next class divided by 2. So take a look. What is the upper limit? 0, 0.4. What is the lower limit of the next class? 0, 0.5 divided by 2, 0 0.45. And you need not count any further. The pattern will always be there since they are uniform 
class intervals. So just subtract and add plus minus 0.05 and you will get the lower boundary remaining ones 0 0.45, 0 0.85, 1.25, the remaining upper boundaries 0 0.85, 1.25, 1.65. All right, this question concludes this lesson. But quickly, let's recap. Remember, important thing is the basic properties of statistics, all right? You know what is used. It's a scientific field of study. But a few things that we learned today, such as the class interval. What are they used for? How are you going to make uniform class intervals? Next, class limits and also class boundaries. So guys, we'll be back in the next lesson because we're going to use whatever we have learned in the next lesson. All right, it's goodbye and I'll see you in the next one.